Can you talk a little bit about the importance of having a personal relationship with a guru in terms of emulating the Buddha and mm -hmm. putting your best step forward? Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, it's very important, I think. Different ways to look at it. One is, in today's times, uh, one of the very important aspects of connecting to a teacher is in being able to receive transmissions and teachings. Hmm. We say inherently all that is taught within Buddha Dharma is not new, it is something that you already innately know. It's only just sort of waking it up and making you more aware of it in so many words and that's the activity of the teacher. But even so, for that waking up or to be able to tell our own self, oh yes, this is true, this is what I have known, we need to rely upon a spiritual master. And so there are different ways to approach it, probably from a Yana perspective also. Uh, first relationship to a teacher as of the Hinayanists is always of an elder, someone to follow the example of. An elder person who is a living example, an elder person who has done it, an elder person who gives you the teachings and are able to retain the purity of the lineage, that's the first. And therefore, from the Hinayana perspective, the teachers is always regarded as arahats or the elders. And therefore, I think the term they use is thera. And so the thera is the term to a teacher. Mahayanists' approach to a teacher is called a kalyan mitra or someone who thinks of the well-being of yourself. And so, as a Mahayanist, we relate to a teacher as somebody whom you can rely upon, and in the English term, we use the term spiritual friend. So the spiritual friend, someone who guides you, someone who supports you, who protects you, who reminds you, who's always there for you. So the relationship that you have with a teacher is almost as of a friend, a very good friend, an honest friend whom you can trust upon. Vajrayanas uh, and the emphasis of Vajrayana, especially within the Maya Mudra teaching, is of a complete guru. So the term guru uh, is applicable more from the Vajrayana perspective. And therefore, in this context, you surrender completely to the guru. And the Vajrayanas believe that the inner refuge is guru devotion. So therefore, from the teachings perspective, we say outer guru is Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha, inner guru is the root teacher. Secret guru is view, meditation, and action. And the ultimate guru is the ground, path, and fruition. That's the four ways of categorizing the teachings, or the teacher itself. Now, these are all sort of more the scholastic or technical ways of going about. To have a teacher first as someone to follow an example, I think is very good, like the Hinayanists do. Then there are many teachers that you have to rely upon who give you good advice, spiritual friends, Kalyan Mitra is very important. Now, as you progress into the Dharma, then transmissions and teachings become very essential. So then you begin to have a guru per se. The Vajrayana guru and guru devotion comes into being. At that, until those moments, it's all about how to benefit from, their relation, from this relationship in terms of getting the teachings. Ultimate guru would be someone who points out to you, uh, we say nature of mind, but prior to nature of mind, I would say a guru is someone whom you can trust completely and the teacher trusts you completely, brave enough, both of them brave enough to point out each other's faults and qualities very directly. When the heart really connects with one another, the teacher and the students, there is a sense of uh, absolute trust Founded upon that trust, the more nature, fundamental nature of mind or the more pith instructions can then be given by the teacher. And in that regard, having a root teacher, having one teacher that you absolutely trust completely becomes very essential. As I was saying earlier, then uh, in today's times, um, I think People have, are very fortunate in that they can relate to many, many teachers. But it is essential to have a very close teacher if you are somebody who cannot train oneself. If you think you can really train yourself you know, without faltering or being manipulative 
with the teachings, then I don't know. I think you can get by without so many teachers. But if a person feels that that reminder and that strictness is needed, teachers become very essential. And when it comes to Tantra and the transmissions of the Tantra, having a teacher is absolutely important. So there are different levels. So if you think you're studying Hinayana, it's not that urgent. Uh, you have many elders that you can just relate to. It's not a very close relationship. In Mahayana also, it's much more the spiritual friend, so you can have a much more friendliness with the teachers, and that's quite all right. When it gets to Vajrayana, you must have a teacher. It's all about then the trust and being able to work with your trust, and therefore the devotion takes on a completely different meaning. So if it is from the Vajrayana's perspective, I would say a teacher is very important. Okay? Great, thank you. <laughs>